You're out shopping with your five-year-old brother. It's been a long day and he's getting antsy. Thankfully, he's distracted with a little ball you got him from the vending machine. He's happily bouncing away, so you turn to the clothing rack and look at some shirts. You find one in the right size and turn around to take him to the cash register to pay, but he's not there. You only turned your back for a second, but he's disappeared without a trace. Seconds feel like hours as you frantically scan the area. Worst case scenarios run through your mind. Then, you see a little ball roll out from under a nearby clothes rack, followed by a little hand reaching for it. He was hiding, and all's right with the world. Save the scalding he's about to get, it only takes seconds for someone to disappear, and most of the time there's a simple explanation. That didn't happen for the people in this video. Some of them were young and anonymous, but others were old and had powerful enemies. One even disappeared twice, but they all have one thing in common. They vanished and were never seen again. Number 8. Owen Parfit Owen Parfit was a man who had lived an interesting life. Or at least he believed that, and he'd be the first to tell you. He claimed to be a pirate, a ladies' man, and an adventurer. But in the 1760s, he was an old man who could barely walk and lived with his sister in Shepton Mallet. This sleepy town in southwest England was the last place you'd expect a mystery to be found. But mystery found Owen Parfit one stormy day. Owen liked to spend his evening sitting outside, but needed the help of his sister and neighbor to go get into his old chair on the front porch. After securing him in his chair for the evening, his sister went inside. The only people around were some farm workers down the road. As the sky darkened, Owen's sister came outside to bring him in away from the lightning. But Owen wasn't in his chair. There'd been no sign of a struggle outside and Owen hadn't made any noise. But there was no sign, and a disabled man certainly couldn't disappear on his own. Owen's sister approached the farm workers and neighbors to search the neighborhood, but no trace of him was ever found. Many rumors circulated around Shepton Mallet about where the old man had gone. Some say that he was taken by the devil to fulfill an old debt. Others said some old pirate enemies had kidnapped him in revenge. In 1813, a skeleton was found nearby, making many people sure the mystery would be solved. But medical experts identified it as a woman's skeleton, and Owen Parfit's last adventure remains unsolved to this day. Number 7. Barbara Newhall Follett one of the most famous people to ever disappear without a trace, Barbara Newhall Follett became a household name when most of us were still in middle school. The author of the novel The House Without Windows, she burst onto the literary scene only at 12 years old. A homeschooled and reclusive young woman, she had a troubled home life and felt that she'd already reached her life's peak by her teens. When the Great Depression hit, she was forced to move to New York and work as a secretary. There, she met Nickerson Rogers and was married by 18 years old. Their marriage soon hit rocky waters, and she believed her husband was cheating on her. They fought, and on December 7, 1939, she stormed out of their apartment with only $30 on her. Rogers assumed she'd be home shortly and waited for her, but he would be waiting a very long time. It was two weeks later when he finally reported Follett's disappearance to the police, and four months before a missing persons notice was issued. Because the bulletin used her married name, Follett's disappearance didn't attract much attention. Follett was never found, but her mother Helen never stopped searching. As the years went on, she became more suspicious of Rogers and accused him of being involved in her daughter's disappearance. Although she demanded the police investigate Rogers, no evidence of foul play was ever found. Barbara Follett's disappearance remains unsolved, and the girl who was thrust onto the national stage early had managed to disappear into thin air. Number 6. Keith Reinhardt Keith Reinhardt was a sports reporter who was tired of the daily grind. He had dreams of opening up an antique shop and decided to move to the quiet town of Silver Plume, Colorado in 1988. His old friend Ted Parker lived there, and he was looking forward to the proximity to another man who loved the outdoors. But tragedy and mystery would follow Reinhardt and Parker as they settled into their new life. Reinhardt opened up his antique shop and hoped his wife would join him soon, but he soon learned that his building had a dark secret. The previous owner, Tom Young, had vanished a year earlier, with his body found ten months later along with his dogs, both shot to death. One day, not long after the gruesome discovery, Keith decided he would climb to the top of nearby Pendleton Mountain, the site of the bodies. He visited Ted, who assumed his friend would back out when he saw how hard the climb was, but Keith Reinhardt made his way up to the mountain regardless and never came down. Those who saw him before he set out said he carried no supplies. Helicopters searched the mountain for signs of him for days, but no sign of Keith Reinhardt was ever found. A search of his business found that he'd been collecting news reports of Tom Young's disappearance and had been writing morbid poetry. Some locals suspect it was a suicide. Others say he planned his disappearance to escape debts and a failing business. Others say that whoever killed Tom Young had claimed another victim. But Keith Reinhardt has never been found, dead or alive. Number 5. Ray Gricar 
Working in law enforcement will earn you powerful enemies, and one Pennsylvania district attorney might have found out that the wrong way. Ray Gricar was a veteran lawman, serving as Center County District Attorney for 20 years. He was ready to retire in 2005, planning to step down after the end of his term, but he never got to serve out that last term, and instead became the subject of one of the most mysterious disappearances of the 21st century. On April 15, 2005, Gricar called his girlfriend Patty Fornicola to let her know he was coming home only minutes away, but he never returned home and soon she called the police. Even though he was only missing for hours, he was a prominent citizen, and the police sprung into action. The next morning, they found a disturbing sight in a local parking lot, his red Mini Cooper, with no sign of Ray Gricar. There were no signs of foul play, but if Gricar had left on his own, he made sure he couldn't be found. His cell phone was still in the car, but his computer, keys, and wallet had been taken. There was no sign of foul play, and many suspected suicide. Ricard's older brother Roy had committed suicide in 1996, and the car was found in a similar position to Roy's on that fateful day. His laptop was found at the bottom of the Susquehanna River months later, missing its hard drive. A damaged hard drive was found months later, but it was badly damaged and not giving up its secret. Ricard's daughter petitioned the court to declare him dead six years later, and his fate remains unsolved. A man resembling him was arrested in Utah, but was eventually proven to not be Ricard. Wherever Ray Gricar went, he took his secrets with him. Number 4. The Mystery of the Bennington Triangle Rural southwestern Vermont is one of the sleepiest locations in the U.S., but in the 1940s it became a place of terror. The Bennington Triangle is an area of small towns surrounding Glastonbury Mountain, now a popular hiking area. It was 1945 when the disappearances started, with 74-year-old Middle Rivers. A local hunter, he was with a group of four on the mountain when he got separated from the group. Locals combed the area, but all they ever found was one of his rifle shells. Rivers knew the area well and was an experienced survivalist, but he was never seen again. He was followed just over a year later by college student Paula Jean Weldon, a sophomore at nearby Bennington College. She went for a hike on the nearby trail seen by many locals. An old couple hiking reported seeing her on the trail ahead of them, but when they reached her location, she had vanished without a trace. The FBI got involved in the case and a reward was offered, but much like Rivers, she vanished into thin air. It was three years later when the mystery of the Bennington Triangle struck again. Elderly veteran James Tedford was riding a bus back to his home at the Bennington Soldier's Home and was seen on the bus at the last stop before Bennington. Somewhere between there and home, he vanished. His luggage was still on the rack, his bus timetable still on the seat, but James Tedford had inexplicably vanished. He was followed by eight-year-old Paul Jeffson, who disappeared from his mother's truck while she got out to feed the pigs. She was gone for an hour, and when she returned, Paul was gone. No evidence of him was ever found. 53-year-old Frida Langer was the last to disappear only a month after Paul, having disappeared after returning to her campsite for a change of clothes. Her body was eventually found almost a year later after an exhaustive search, the only victim to be found, but no cause of death could ever be determined. The Bennington Triangle had claimed its last victim, but its mysteries were never solved. Number 3. Joseph Force Crater a powerful judge facing a career-ending scandal may have been an enemy he couldn't outrun, or found an unconventional way out of his troubles. Joseph Force Crater was already a household name in New York before his disappearance in 1930, having risen to the rank of state Supreme Court Justice. But he had a history of corruption, including a mysterious withdrawal that many suspect was a payoff to the Tammany Hall political machine. He used his position as a bankruptcy receiver to get a huge profit, leading many to accuse him of money laundering. Was this what led to his disappearance? Crater and his wife Sheila were vacationing in Maine when he received a mysterious call that led him to drive back into the city in a hurry. He promised his wife that he would return by her birthday, but his behavior in New York aroused suspicion. He combed his courthouse files, he carried locked briefcases out of his office, and he had his file clerk cash two massive checks, almost $80,000 in today's money. Crater had dinner with friends that night and planned to see a Broadway show, but afterwards accounts differ. Some of his friends say he left in a taxi, others say he walked down the street, but no one thought anything of it until he didn't return to Maine. His wife frantically called his friends but got no answer. The police weren't notified until almost a month after he disappeared, and the disappearance of Judge Crater became national news. The police interrogated many women in Atlantic City who Crater had been involved with, but none knew where he had gone. An investigation was inconclusive to declare Crater alive or dead. Did an old enemy take revenge on Crater for his corruption, or did he escape and take on a new identity? 
A possible break in the case came 85 years later when a recently deceased woman left notes claiming that Crater had been killed by a corrupt NYPD officer on the orders of Murder, Inc. She gave directions to where he was buried in Coney Island, but no remains were found. Number 2. Tara Calico The disappearance of Tara Calico is one of the most haunting unexplained disappearances. Not because of what we don't know, but because of what we do. Only 19 years old, Calico was fond of riding her bicycle along New Mexico State Road 47. She often rode with her mother, Patty, but Patty stopped riding because she thought a driver was stalking them. Patty warned Tara to be careful, but Tara wasn't worried. On Tuesday, September 20, 1988, Tara didn't return from her ride. Patty went out searching for her and contacted the police. They found pieces of her Sony Walkman, and witnesses said they saw her on her bike ride, closely followed by an unknown driver in a pickup truck. A chilling break in the case came almost a year later, on June 15, 1989, across the country in Port St. Joe, Florida. A photograph was found in the parking lot of a convenience store. It showed a young woman bound and gagged in the trunk of a car next to a young boy. The woman who found the photo of the two kidnapping victims said she saw a windowless van driven by a man with a mustache. Police were unable to chase the van down. Patty identified the woman in the picture as Tara based on a scar on her leg, and the boy was initially identified as the missing Michael Henley. But the New Mexico boy's body was found a year later near where he disappeared, having died from exposure after getting lost. The boy in the picture has never been identified, and Tara Calico was never seen again. Number 1. Solomon Northup One of the most famous missing person stories in history, Solomon Northup's tale became a best-selling memoir and an Oscar-winning biopic. But what happened to him after remains a mystery. Northup was a free-born black man living in New York in the early 1800s, but the southern states didn't care about that. When Northup, a traveling musician, went to Washington, D.C. to perform in 1841, he was drugged and kidnapped. He was sent to New Orleans, where he was sold as a slave. For 12 years, he was sent from one owner to another and treated brutally, until he met a Canadian worker who heard his story and got him legal help in New York. Upon his return to New York in 1853, he published his memoir, Twelve Years a Slave. But the years of hard labor and beatings had taken their toll on Northup, and he was reported to be a drunken and depressed man. Although he found a second career as a speaker on the brutality of slavery, he often faced violent crowds opposed to his message. By 1858, he had disappeared off the map, and not even his wife or children knew where he was. Many speculated he'd been killed by his enemies who wanted to silence him, or had been kidnapped again and sold into slavery despite being an older man who would be of little use on a farm. A more optimistic rumor is that he couldn't stand doing nothing while others were in slavery and he left to join the Underground Railroad. Or maybe, while drinking to escape his horrible memories, he simply met his end by falling into a nearby lake. Solomon Northup's words impacted the world long after he was gone, but the man disappeared without a trace. Ready to make the rest of your evening disappear mysteriously? Why not watch some more videos? Like these missing people were mysteriously found alive, or this one. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.